This year at the North American Auto Show, we're seeing the combination of higher gas prices, better public awareness about global warming, as well as new regulations pushing automakers to offer ever more efficient products across the market. On the other hand, there's a lot of stuff out there we're not sure how it's going to pan out. We're going to take a look at some of the introductions that are significant in a green sense, and there's really a lot to see. A lot of times you'll see on the back of a vehicle a little logo, flex fuel. Some of them uh, have maybe a green leaf, depending on the automaker. Uh, most car companies have a logo like this. What that means is that the vehicle was designed to be able to run on either plain gasoline or a mixture of gasoline and ethanol. And there's kind of a green glow about that. Folks should really know that, unfortunately, it's not really any greener just because it can run on ethanol really doesn't make it a cleaner vehicle. The bottom line for the environment in these vehicles is still the gas mileage number. So if you have two vehicles, one's got flex fuel logo on it, the other doesn't. In terms of the environment, one's just as good as the other. There's really a big question mark uh, over whether biofuels help stop global warming and take, at the end of the day, more CO2 out of the air than, than gets put back in. That's very unclear. But it's really unambiguous that if you're helping forests regrow, you're really helping the atmosphere. And GM, if they're, if they're packaging that together, helping make your, your vehicle a little more carbon neutral, you get something that as a package is even more environmentally friendly than just good gas mileage. Everybody following the green car scene knows about the Nissan LEAF, the first really full function, fully capable, all electric vehicle in the North American market. From an environmental point of view, there's no doubt that plugging in is a real win. For the same size car, you cut your carbon emissions by about half by moving from gasoline to electric. If you live in a part of the country that has cleaner than average electricity generation, like California, whose electric power mix is 50% cleaner than average, you of course do much better than that. There's still a big cost factor with electrification, as well as a convenience factor. But one of the great things that Nissan has done this past year is team up with uh, charging companies, and they've produced a very rapid charge, what's called a level three charger. We've got one standing here uh, next to me. They hope, and I'm sure it will, open the door for a lot more people to begin electrifying. Honda now offers their Civic car in a variety of configurations and, and different powertrains. Today we're standing in front of the CNG, that's Compressed Natural Gas version of the Civic, which just won an award for Green Car of the Year. Natural gas, we all know about it. Some of us use it to heat our homes or gas stoves and, and that type of thing. It's a fossil fuel and it has less carbon when it's burned than gasoline. One of the issues though, and it's not Honda's fault, but it's something to think about when you're considering alternative fuel cars, is that how green the whole package is, is not just about the car, but about the fuel, where it comes from, and how it's distributed. Natural gas is mostly methane. Somewhere between the natural gas wells and the distribution systems, a lot of methane leaks out, more than people thought. A Civic Hybrid, actually all in all, turns out to be cleaner because of that methane leakage associated with the natural gas. The moral of the story here is that when it comes to buying an efficient car, you can look at alternative fuels, but being an alternative fuel doesn't guarantee that the car is going to be greener overall. The Honda FCX fuel cell Clarity is perhaps one of the most forward-looking vehicles here. We don't know what the powertrain of the future is, but Almost all automakers have been working on the hydrogen car. It's the only fuel we readily have at our disposal that you can really store a lot of energy of, almost as much as gasoline in a compressed tank, uh, and not release CO2, carbon dioxide. The only other way to do that is with electricity. So for that reason, a lot of car companies are hedging their bets and working on fuel cell cars. Honda is the one company that has been running a small lease program, putting these FCX Clarities in the hands of their customers. It's an exceptionally clean vehicle uh, in many ways. Walking around the show floor this year with our green eyeglasses on, so to speak, we saw quite a variety of offerings badged as green in one way or another. Not just hybrids and electric cars, but some fuel cell vehicles, plug-in hybrids, natural gas, all sorts of offerings. Especially when you look at the marketing that says, well, to be really green, maybe you have to be electric. Well, it's true. 
But there's a great practical message that comes out of this year's auto show. All car companies have more efficient vehicles across the lineup. And so when it comes to buy green, it's actually not that hard. Think about what your budget is. Think about what your needs are. Don't overconsume. Just look for the car that gets the best gas mileage that meets your needs and fits your budget.